Welcome back to another episode of Unscripted Exchanges. Tuning in from a different zip code is Mr. Cole Hazenfield. Cole, where the hell are you, buddy? Dude, I'm down in uh, down in sunny Florida, man. Down in uh, permanently too. So this is my new recording studio. Um, we actually replaced Jimmy with a mounted deer on a wall because um, Jimmy just wasn't cutting it. So we said, "Fuck Jimmy, we're going with the deer head." Um, so I actually, yeah, moved down, uh, moved down to sunny Fort Myers, Florida. Um, I'm recording off my phone. Don't exactly have all my tools set up here yet, but it has been too damn long since we got in the studio. And I bet I know all of our listeners are going, what happened to these guys? Well, you know, we had a little hop and a skip and here we are. Um, so yeah, just get settled in down here and, uh, excited to be back on the mic. Hell yeah, man. Florida is a good place to be. And like you said, it's, it's been a minute. I don't know if we were uh, practicing what we were preaching, but uh, we fell short of some of our, uh, our goals here with the podcast, but that's all right. We're firing things back up. It's, it's good to uh, let it rip again. And I'm sure we'll be a little bit rusty, but uh, at the same time, we'll probably pick back up where we left off. So what's new? What else is new? Said, well, here, here's Florida. The- Here's the thing. Let's just let's just get a little motivational moment out of the way. Like life happens. Shit happens. Right. You always hear that life happens. Life and for you and I, you know, you've got you've got another little uh, little thing going on in your life. Um, I've got a big move going on in my life. Uh, and you know, we got a little sidetracked. But like, dude, you know, nobody puts baby in a corner, as they say. We're back on the mic and that we came back to it. So uh, I think for anybody out there. You know, uh, you know, you can, you can, you can take little breaks or uh, go different routes. But I mean, if you have a vision and have a goal, like we do with this podcast, you'll always, always gravitate back towards it, right? So again, not to get too philosophical, but I think the podcast is a huge part of my life. Um, whether or not fifty million people are listening to it or five people are listening to it, Hayden, for me, I've missed it. I missed the therapeutic experience of talking through things right you say it you kind of you say it you speak it in existence so um hopefully that's actually more motivating to our listeners that are out there that say hey you know i here's a few things that i've stopped doing maybe you haven't gotten in the gym recently maybe you stopped reading as much as you said you could maybe you said you weren't going to eat out five times a week but now you're up to six right whatever it is like it's never too late to get back to it just jump back on the horse so there you go there's my well said. No, I, I'm uh, piggybacking on it. And I posted something out there on LinkedIn. I don't know if it was yesterday or late last week, but it's like, you know, what is it that you want to do? Why aren't you doing it? Like, you just have to reframe and refocus yourself. And that's kind of what we just did here. Like, why haven't we been able to record? And there's no need to really go into all those details. But, you know, we have a strong purpose and foundation for why we've wanted to do this, where we're trying to go, where we currently are, and then, yeah, where we're going to be. And it's just, again, refamiliarizing ourselves with that strong purpose or that why and, you know, getting right back on the bandwagon, man. I'm excited. I think we're climbing in the rankings. The Paul brothers better watch out, as you said. They have to. And Tucker, Tucker Carlson, too, just took over number one on Spotify. So I did see that. That's wild. And then yeah. what's his name's also got a pretty good uh, media company uh, going these days. Is it uh, P? BD Patrick or PDB Patrick David bet the guy that's I think in your neck of the woods down in Florida. Um, oh, he's an yeah, entrepreneur. Dude, we just hung out the other week. Yeah. We just hung out the other week. Hey, we're going to get him on the show or we'll be on his show someday soon. You know, we're working out the details. Oh, dude. I'm like, hey, I'm in your backyard. Or is he in mine? That's the question. I, th- I think he might be even a little bit further uh, south is he's, I think at the tip of the peninsula, I think he's in Miami. If I know my geography, I don't know. Hell if I know Florida's so bad. Oh my. You and you and I are going to spend some time so I can show you on a map. Cause I've had to have this discussion. Fort Myers and like Cape Naples area is about as south as Miami. It's just on the other side. Uh, okay. All right. Nope. He's fact, he's fact checking me and correcting me. I like it. No, because I had to get on because I had my brother was down here and he was like, well, oh, and my, my sister, I've had the whole family down. Um, uh, and they're like, you know, like I want to go down to Miami, but and I'm like, dude, you could drive over there. You have to go through called Alligator Alley, is what it's called, to get across the state. It's through the basically through the Everglades, but it's like 120 miles from here. 
like like 50 miles south and then like 80 miles uh east is where Miami's at Fort Lauderdale okay good to know did so, you I, just so you know next thing you know I'm gonna be wearing white pants I'm gonna be wearing I have a chain and I'm driving around in my Lambo okay let's back and forth between Miami were there I was any... thinking of bad boys is when I said that. I was thinking of bad boys. Like, all right, that? all right. Did you have any uh, prereqs uh, to become a Floridian? Did you have to ride on a gator's back or wrestle a gator or anything crazy like that? None no, that well, I did, I did see – I actually have seen gators. I'm still I, – I, I was, like, telling them at work, you know, like, oh, I saw some gators in our ponds. They're like, cool. I'm like, you don't understand. Like, I still – when I see a gator – so I'm like, oh, there's a gator. Like they come, well, they're because you don't see them. Like, but they they say one of my coworkers said if you can reach down in your hands in water, there's probably gators in it. Okay, that's what they said. Wow, wow. So basically, like every pond down here in Florida, any lake pond, I have gators in it. Dang, that's kind of uh, nerve wracking to an extent. I know, no one what's lurking out there. But uh, I know you and I like talking about uh, real life, uh, examples and experiences. And I'm kind of just going to put you on the spot here. Um, yeah, and kind of ref reflect what were some of the biggest, um, I don't know, reflection points, talking points when it came to moving from Ohio all the way down to Florida. Cause I'm sure that was big. Like, what did you learn? What changed you? Maybe nothing changed anything you'd like to share around that yeah uh so i think there's a couple things hayden uh and i think this is good for listeners and i mean whether you're old young middle-aged whatever like when you get an opportunity to do something that can have a very positive impact in your life mm -hmm. or can have a very negative outcome yeah that you have to be optimistic because if it can have a, a, an impact in a positive way, it gives you a lot of room for growth. So sure. when I, so, so me and my wife had a lot of discussions about this, this move, obviously. And, um, you know, aside from the work opportunity, which I, I will say this, I moved down here for a new uh, business opportunity um, that was very, 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 uh, you know, it's going to set us up very well in life. Um, you know, as long as I do what I need to do, but it wasn't just, moving for quote unquote money or business. Uh, it was, it was the opportunity. So we were talking about this before, before we started recording. Uh, and I know that's why you're putting me on the spot. Uh, so it was the opportunity for growth, uh, growth and becoming the next version of myself. And that was something that I have felt like I've done over the past 10 years, right? I've gone through, you know, you go back to the 18 or I say 12 years ago, the 18 year old version of Cole. All right. Go back, go two years next. That's a new version. He's got a, he's got a kid. He's married, right? He's just starting his career, you know, four years later. Now he's, his, he's got a four and a half year old. Uh, he's been married for a few years. He's, you know, we went from Michigan to Cincinnati, you know, this is a new version of Cole, right? Go, 27 26 27 28 right that was a version of me right a newer version right where you know i chose to quit drinking i chose to, to have another child another girl right so like i go through these phases and every phase you know if i look back on for me if i look back on different different levers in my life that pull i pulled to change things mm -hmm. like they were there were big decisions i made that allowed me, allowed me is probably not the right word, forced me, forced me to change, forced me to, I'm going to do like an analogy, like a lizard shedding its skin, okay? Forced me to literally shed in order to get where I wanted to get to next, uh, which is really neat when you get to share that. I'm sidebarring here. It's really neat when you get to share that with friends, right? Like you, you know, you've seen, I'm sure even in the past three years, we've both seen each other change drastically, right? I mean, maybe it's not huge changes, but it's incremental change, right? Mm -hmm. But, you know, what, what I would say that really drove this decision and then some insight I've gotten out of it is the opportunity to see what the next chapter of Cole's life looks like. Mm -hmm. And that makes me very emotional to think about because it's tough. Like what I, we were talking before this, it is, it is tough getting rid of that old version of yourself 
to see what the new version is going to look like. Because nobody wants to do that, okay? Let's nobody anybody can say they do, but nobody really at the core wants that uncomfortability. They you want the reward, but not the struggle, right? That's Dude, what you're they want. On. That's yeah. all. Of us. Yeah, we yeah. all do. Uh, and so I think the trick that people had, the, the the lesson that people like you and I have learned is in order to be able to deal with that uncomfortability, you just have to jump in. Because if you if you dip your toe in the water for growth or change, in my opinion, you know, if you just say, oh, I'm gonna, I might want to change this or I might want to grow, you're never going to do it. So you have to kind of jump in the deep end and then you don't have a choice. It's not like it's, it's sink or swim, you know. It's, and so, Hayden, what, what I've, I've done is I have thrown myself into the deep end uh, with my family because it was the right thing to do so that that next version could come out. Uh, and I don't know what the next version is going to look like. I have no idea who the next five years of coal is going to be. Uh, I will say that the silver lining uh, on this whole experience for me, and I said that to my wife, I said, uh, when we were actually, this was, this was a cool, uh, Amanda, shout out to Amanda. Cause we were, it was like one of these just like, this like this this I can't even describe the pivotal moment when we were finishing packing up they were finishing packing up our house in Cincinnati mm -hmm. and we signed we signed the paperwork for our new home like it was done like we had just closed on the new house and we had just closed on the last chapter and I said you know this is what like the best these are the best years like some people don't realize they're in the best years. And I said, this is the best, this is going to be the next, best 10 years of our lives. Like, this is it. Like, we're in looking at Ava, looking at Amanda, looking at Blake and saying, okay, we're in it. Like, we're and realizing we're in it. And then also we looked at each other and, and we we're just like, this is going to be tough. Like, this is, this can be so beautiful, but man, like what? Literally, like, we looked at her like, what are we doing? Okay, what? Like, is this, this is, this is, we're done now. We, we there's no turning back. What are we doing? Uh, and it was just funny because, like, we, I literally was laughing out loud and she was too. Because we're just like, well, there's no, there's literally like, like the ship has sailed. Like, we're, we're, we're going. Um, and I, I think the, what, what I've experienced over the past, you know, just kind of put a button on this what I've experienced over the past month and a half is, is spots of extreme uncomfort spots of, um, anxiety, uh, you know, uh, being down, being anxious, being worried, uh, or in spots of extreme happiness. Right. So I'm going, you know, I'm, I'm kind of going teeter tottering right now, mm -hmm. uh, because yeah. I'm not, I'm not hitting any super lows. That's just, not in my DNA. Hmm. Um, I'm blessed with that. Very blessed. Uh, I don't downplay that people go through that, but you know, I would say that in this, in this uncomfortability, you and I, again, we're talking about it. And I realized this a couple of days ago that I just, I have to embrace the fact that I need to change. Like I, I chose this. This is a new change. This is, a, and so I have to accept like what I did when I got here was kind of just get, get in the flow and go through the thing. And then they're, they're out of town and I'm down here by myself and I don't know anybody and I'm off work and I'm trying to figure out what to do. And I'm going, I don't, I don't have anybody to call. I don't have anybody. And I'm starting to go like, okay, this is like, this is the spot you're in now. Right. So be a uh, change, dude, change the, change the comfortability level, change the way you address go, you know, going out, change the habits you have, Right, figure out a way to adapt so that you can get rid of rid of the the coal that was in Cincinnati, right? That version of you, so that you got to make room for the new ones. So right now, I'm going through a, a high level of of angst, um, not all the time, but a high level of angst and and angst not in a bad way. Angst as in like, oh, I've missed this. Oh, this is going away. Like understanding that, um, and then. A level of, you know, what do I do next, right? Like, how do I, how do I take on this challenge? Uh, and I'm, and I'm trying to do it and, and not over, uh, overcomplicate it. But I'm just trying to do little things. Um, but 
Yeah, so like a lot of growth, a lot of growth going on over. And I truly, truly, truly believe uh, for anybody listening, Hayden, including yourself, you know this because we talk about this all the time, is growth is if you can go to somebody and they say, wow, you've changed. That is awesome. Now, granted, hopefully it's in a good way. Hopefully it's not a, wow, you've changed. Like now you're a lying sack of shit. Okay. But like, oh, well, you're different. Like, you you know, if you, if you get that reaction from people you haven't seen in a while in a positive way, that means you're doing something right. You know, or if they're, oh, you've changed because you don't want to go out drinking. Like that's okay. Sorry. Yeah, I've changed because I wanted to better my health. Um, and then, dude, we haven't been on the pod in a while. See, once you got me rolling, you know I wasn't going to stop. Well, I'm letting um, you go. But real quick, I just, I appreciate your candidness and, you know, your transparency with everything here, which, you know, par for the course coming from you. And I think it's good that you're kind of sharing, um, you know, everything that you've been navigating uh, just individually. And then, you know, with your family, I, I think there's definitely a lot of insights that you've been sharing and helpful to, you know, not only myself, but our listeners. So yeah, keep going, keep sharing. Well, I, I think the last thing I was going to say was, you know, and this is for the parents out there and Hayden, this is for, you know, like I said, all the parents out there um, is that I decided and, I, and this is specifically, I'm even going to say for the men, and this is not against the women, but this is for the men, 1 million percent. Fathers, men's of, men of households, in those times of change, or those times of jumping into something, the number one critical component for success is you. 1 million percent. And you, as a man, have to embrace that and not shy away from it. Like, and if... And again, I don't want to get too religious, but like, I'm I I am a Christian and I'm a believer, and I believe in, and I'm and there's some stuff that can be willy wonky, but there's one thing that's a constant throughout any scripture you read is that the tone of the house, the man of the house, starts with him, right? He sets the tone. He puts the umbrella out and sets the tone for the faith, for the relationship with the parents, with friends, with themselves, and when you go through something like this, as a man, embrace that. Uh, and own that and understand that because of that, it's going to be harder for you. One million percent. Like, and I think that's what's probably causing some of my uncomfortability too, is that internal looking internally, I understand that I have, I, it, it all circles around. this not being self-centered. If I'm happy, if I'm healthy, if I, take on the challenge with excitement. Um, if I embrace that, then my family unit will embrace that as well. Right. Those it's called being a leader lead by example. And you can, you can either make or break it. I had this conversation with Ava actually, uh, she was really scared when we first got here and she's nervous about starting a new school, which I get it. Like, and I told her, I said, I'm nervous about this too. Like, I'm I, this is, I said, but what you get to do Ava, is I said, when you go to a new school, is you get to meet new people and the new people you meet aren't going to know the old Ava. They're going to know the new Ava. So this gives you the opportunity to be who you want to be, to portray how you want to be portrayed, to set, to set and lead by example, starting the day and not being, not be judged or have preconceptions about you. So look at it as like you turned over a new page and it's, it's to look towards the future. And so it's little things like that, though, that as a, as a dad and as a man, you're saying that stuff and you have to show the talk, but it's tough being the person that has to say all that stuff and do all that stuff. Like, we don't always, we as us as men, we don't always feel that way, but I'm just going to say it, buck the fuck up and put on a face and be the man. Go get some help if you need to get some help. Go talk to your, your buddies or your mom or your friends. Go get that help and use them as support because you need to suck it up and be the leader of your household, no matter what. So that's yeah. my, that's my, and I'm sure you can add that you have a lot to add to that because I think that's what for me is what's also making this more challenging is knowing that I have to be, I have to be firing on all cylinders, no matter what kind of day I had, no matter how anxious I am, no matter how crappy work was, does not matter. I have to be, I have to be the rock. Otherwise, this won't happen. This won't work. Amen to all of that, brother. I mean, that's 
kind of the definition of being a, a good provider and a, a family man in the world that we live in. Um, I, I think kind of one of the biggest things that I heard you share there is if you are able to be, you know, transparent with your family and in this situation or this example, like you said, with your daughter, um, now again, there's certain degrees where you probably want to keep some things probably between like you and your wife, but you're giving Ava an outlet to understand how to cope with stress, stressful situations. So she knows how to deal with, you know, what she's navigating. Whereas if you weren't handling this in the right manner, or you were complaining about it, she's going to have the same type of reactions and behavior. So I think that's a beautiful thing hearing that from you. I mean, like you said, you recognize like, Hey, this isn't easy for me as well. You know, I'm nervous too, but the way that you're still like continuing to be actionable and moving forward, you're still having a positive mindset. Like, Hey, we're going to figure it out, you know, lean on us, uh, Ava in this situation, you know, for you, like talking to me, talking to some of your friends, like you're going to figure it out. But if like you decided to go down a different route that was more so negative, your children basically are going to pick up on those behaviors is what I'm hitting on what you kind of were illustrating. Yeah. So I think that's just a beautiful mindset to have. And I just wanted to reemphasize that for uh, those listening. It's just at the end of the day, your kids are going to pick up on your tendencies, your behaviors. And a lot of times they're going to re uh, implement those into their life. So it's like, you got to be careful for how you operate. The so good, the good and the bad. The and good then, and the bad. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, maybe on a, a more brighter note, and then maybe we can kind of wrap things up here for today, since this is kind of just a, a check in, see how you're doing since it's been a minute. And obviously that's a huge transition and moving down to Florida. That's actually, you know what, part of the reason why we, we took a little bit of a hiatus, you know, big life move for Cole. I had some stuff going on, but uh, anything that you're looking forward to in terms of being down in Florida uh, any like cool restaurants? I don't know other destinations within. Well, the state you're making of Florida. you're making me feel all spotlight spotlighted, Hayden. Uh, yeah, that's what this this is all about for this episode, you know. Uh, you just want to know because we haven't talked in a couple of days, a couple of weeks. Um, no, I I think there's a lot to explore. I think there's a lot to explore. I think. Um, Watch out for the wild animals, though. No, I mean the wild animals are crazy. Uh, we've seen some manatees, some dolphins, uh, some turtles, uh, snakes, gators, and like huge. I'm talking huge. You can't even see my hands. That's how big. Huge iguanas. Uh, we've probably caught 5,000 lizards and frogs already. Uh, so I'm going to jump in real quick. This, this might be kind of a random question. I mean, obviously I know you and the fam are pretty big into like wildlife or animals, but did you and Amanda have to have any like, you know, sit down conversations with Ava, maybe even more so Blake in terms of like, Hey, this is a slightly different environment. We need to be a little bit more careful or nothing really around that now. No, no, because I think it's, again, I mean, we, we've taught Ava is highly intelligent yeah, uh, and old enough to like, you know, she knows so much about animals and about that stuff that for her, it wasn't really a conversation. You don't really have to have it. Like, yeah. you know, we can't go near ponds and it's like, I don't have to have the conversation because we're going for a walk with the dogs or we're rollerblading, which is something we've been doing. Yeah. And there's a, there's a six foot alligator swimming along the bank. Like you don't have to tell her, Hey, she doesn't want to go near the water. She's, yeah. she's like, I'll look at it from a distance. Um, that part of her brain's developed. Like, she knows. <laughs> yeah. It's not that it seems like, like I got lucky the past 10 years we've come down to Florida. Because anytime we would see a big pond, we're like, let's get our vision bowls and go right up on the bank. And it's like, everybody here is like, dude, don't get no ear. Don't know. I don't care if they say there's no gators in there. There's probably gators. Yep. Um, just assume. Yep. Yeah, just assume. Uh, and then Blake. I mean, Blake, we just, you know. It's not our, it's not her job to know that stuff. So it's our job. So yeah. I don't, yeah, we don't, we don't have this conversation with her. Cause I mean, she wouldn't get it either. And honestly, I, so this is kind of something funny again, cause we haven't talked about. So I, mean, I, I tried to make, I made this story up about Freddie, the alligator, who's a big mean looking alligator, but he's also sweet. He just doesn't want to be friends with people. 
So every single night now, I tell her this, it's Freddy the one-eyed alligator and Charlie the one-eyed grizzly bear, and they're both best friends, but we don't go near them. Yep. So, like, she's not terrified or, like, freaked out about gators. She thinks, like, this Freddy's a really nice gator that he just has a, a big, mean grizzly bear that's really his friend, and they're both nice, but we don't go up to gators or grizzly bears, do we? No, Dad, we don't, because they just need to be friends, and they don't like other people. Yeah, you're exactly right. So that's, like... So, no, I've had that conversation with her, but I've tried to, um, you know, instill some some level of fear in her about them without scaring. There's no, you can't do it like, hey, if you go near a gator, you're going to die. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, you know, like, hey, if you go near a, a lake, then they're going to bite your hand off. But you don't want to get near Freddy because Freddy doesn't like humans. So that's our. I think that's a real healthy way of kind of describing it to her because, I mean, she's still pretty darn young so she's trying to make the connection points and understand kind of the, the fundamental uh principles that you're trying to lay out there so totally makes sense um no i i'm loving like you said I, we haven't really connected in uh, a hot minute so i appreciate uh you know you sharing more of your your personal story and everything that's been kind of going on with the transition and move down there um it it sounds like you guys are totally crushing it um and again, I, I think the way that you were laying out how in times of extreme discomfort, you have the option to, and we, again, I've talked about it in previous conversation, you can either embrace it or you can run from it. And it sounds like, you know, you're rolling up your sleeves, you and your family and willing to, you know, kind of deal with it. You know, it's going to be bumpy along the way, but with this uh, intense struggle at times, there's going to be hopefully in theory, a lot of reward too. And that's what makes it so meaningful at the end of the day or at the end of that journey. So I love it. I'll tell you this and then we can, and then we can wrap up because I think this is, this is something you don't know, but it's mm -hmm. good for our audience to hear because when we first moved here, our stuff took two weeks to get here. So we had nothing here in the house. Supposed to get here within five days, two weeks. Yeah. Uh, our AC unit went out. Okay. Um, what else? There was like one other thing. There was like one or two other things. All happened like right away. Like literally no AC is not working. One of the AC units, 95 degree heat. You know, stuff's not here. No stuff, nothing to sleep on. Nothing, to, no beds. No, I mean, just the stuff we packed in the man's car. Um, there was like, stuff, oh, and here's what it was. And my bank account got hacked. And oh my all of God. our- yeah. Like my main checking account. Yeah. So we had written a check that we had sent out in the mail. Cause I, I can't remember what it was for. But it was a pretty significant check. I think it was like I what was it? It was something I think it was maybe Ava's school, like last check for her school up in Cincinnati sure. or something like that. Anyway, somebody stored on the mailbox, posted it on the dark web. So they froze all of my funds through Capital One. Dang. So we had a switch. The thing was, is like a lot of, like, you know, with bank accounts, like you have your primary accounts that like bills. Uh, you know. So, so then we're like getting notices that, because we had to switch everything. So we're trying to figure out like where it was like, so there was like three things in a row. And honestly, the family, the way the family handled it was like, Amanda, seriously, she is a saint because she showed me a side of her I'd not ever seen of like, we're going to just have to deal with it. Let's just roll with it. Like it's a little irritating. Yeah. And I'm like, and that's what made me get, that's, that's what reaffirmed to me that I, like, if I can set the tone of like, let's just roll with it, deal with it. Then a family adopts that. Right. Like mm -hmm. it's like all this, all this positivity that I've had for years is finally, it's like finally paying off. Like everybody's singing the tune. Right. Like, you know, like, you know, you watch the feet, you play on the feet and you watch it grow. I and, love it. And so that was neat. So uh, a little bit of adversity, I did again, um, you know, didn't didn't stop us. Um, but I think that was I did I did feel like, and this is one thing I'm pointing out, when that stuff happened, I was a little bit relieved because I was like, at least we're getting some big stuff out of the way now, mm -hmm. like yeah. some big adversity, right? Like now we're in the monotonous adversity. Those were the big adversity things. Now we're in the day-to-day -day adversity, the day-to-day -day, we don't have people here, the day-to-day, -day, you know, of of adapting to the change. 
which I think is way harder than oh your AC went out. Okay, like let's go get a mobile AC unit. Let's uh, you know I'll cut a hole in a piece of cardboard. We'll stick it outside. We'll roll with it. So, anyways, I think, I, I think everything that you're hitting on there is just a, a true testament, though, to your character, your family's character. And then, you know, the example that you just described there with you and Amanda and how she kind of supported you guys when you were dealing with some of those initial hiccups is that, that's, a, in my mind, a, a great sign of a strong marriage and playing off of one another. Obviously, you know, you're the leader for the family. But you know she's going to help support where she can, and that was just a particular Dude, instance of that. Her, yeah, her reaction. I hope I can't wait for her to listen to this one, baby. You're the best. Shout out Amanda because her reaction to that, that that I don't think she knows mm -hmm. how much that helped take some weight off my. And that's what you're talking about. You and Haley have the same thing, dude. And anybody out there that's got a strong partner, the amount of weight that they take off of our shoulders when we're dealing with when i'm dealing with things or she's dealing with things just somebody that can say hey i support you hey let's roll with it together like dude two is better than one and when you can split that stress up between two it takes a huge weight off your shoulders absolutely i mean you're there to complement one another that will have to be a conversation for another day is what makes yeah. a good marriage man yeah yeah there we go i don't have all the answers yet but no, neither do i but we got some thoughts and some shit maybe <laughs> you should stay away from lessons yeah. that we've learned yeah well hey i think this has been awesome appreciate you sharing again more of your personal uh story and what's been happening but uh why don't you uh sign us off since it's been a minute let's see how how rusty you are oh dude, there's no rust on there's no rust on these wheels baby well, thank you once again for joining Unscripted Exchanges. It is our pleasure, Hayden and I's pleasure and blessing to us to be able to share everything going on in our lives, thoughts, concerns, to hear from you guys. Uh, we we love doing this, and we hope that you know you continue to kick ass in whatever you're doing in 2024, and uh, we're going to get back, right back into pumping out some some content for you guys. Peace.